There are two ways we can simulate a control system described by a transfer function. The first way to use MATLAB. This is the MATLAB code I showed you in the class. Now let's just run the MATLAB code. To run the MATLAB code, so under the lab editor tab, just click run. It will show the speed profile. So the velocity is output. So engine force is the input. It shows when an engine force with few hundred newtons is, is applied to the system, how the output, the velocity changes over time in over 100 seconds. So this is one way to simulate a control system to show the input output relationship. Now I will show you the second way. So the second way is to use Simulink. So similarly, we will call the Simulink model directly from a live script. To create a live script file, just under the live editor tab, so go to new and choose live script. Then you can add a title here, like add a title, hiding or just normal text. So here, just a type. This is a title. This is a normal text. Then you can switch between the test and the MATLAB code. So this is a MATLAB code. First, let's define the variables. So similarly to the one we did using MATLAB. So define M, B, and U. Define M, B, and U. Here, let's assume so that U is one solid Newton. The simula simulation time is still one hundred seconds. Then let's call the simulation model. So this is just a picture. So this is a, a screenshot of the simulation model I built earlier. I will teach you how to build a simulation model. As you can see, it's pretty much like a block diagram then with the trans function inside. To insert a picture in a lab script, just under the insert tab, just click on the image, then choose the image you want to insert to the lab script. We can also insert equations here so under the insert tab, still under the insert tab, choose equations. So I prefer to use like LaTeX equations. For example, to type the trans function here, I use the command fraction. The numerator is one, so denominator is m times s plus b. Okay. So click on OK. So we have an equation here. <clears throat> now I will show you how to build a simulation model. So to build a simulation model, let's go to the home tab. So click on the theme link here. Then let's create a model, a blank model. Click create model. Now we have a blank simulation model. To build a simulation model, it's pretty much like uh, how to build a control block diagram. So first, let's start with the process. We know the process is described by a trans function. So at the location, you want to insert a block. Okay, just double click the location in the simulation canvas. So double click. Then in the search blocks, type the name of the block. For example, we want to insert a trans function. Just type transfer. You see, so all related block will show up. So let's click on the trans function, the first one. Then to define the trans function, we can double click on the block. Then to show the block parameters, so to specify a trans function, we need to specify the coefficients of the numerator and denominator. So in our case, the trans function is one over m s plus b. So therefore the coefficient of the numerator is just one. Then the coefficients of the denominator, we always start with the highest order. 
So it's a polynomial. The denominator is a polynomial of the complex variable S. We always start with the highest order. So this will be M first, then B. Then we do click on apply. Then click OK. So if this is the first time you build a thematic model, it may give you some warning. Maybe first let me clear the workspace. Let's go back to the thematic model. So to reset this block, so we can drag either corner to make it larger. Then you will see the symmetric model. We will see the trans function, not symmetric model, sorry. You will see the trans function, the trans function one over ms plus b. The first time when, we, when you create this model using letters, it may give you some warning because the value of m and b had not has, have not been assigned to a numerical to numerical values. So therefore it may give you some warning, but no problem. So when, once we run the symmetric code, so the M and the B will be assigned to numerical values, then you will not see this warning. Just click on okay. So now we have the trans function of the control system. Then we need an input. So the input here, we have like a constant. So the U is one sub Newton. For a constant input, so the common block we use, we call it a step. Again, so double click on the symmetric canvas, just type step, then click on the first one, so the step signal. Then there are two ways, there are not just two ways, multiple ways we can connect these two blocks. So one way will be we try to align, align two blocks, then the suggested link will be highlighted. Then just click on the suggested link, so the two blocks will be connected. Then a second way, it just, if we click on the part of one block, so all possible connections will be highlighted. Then we just click on another part, then it, the two blocks will be connected. Then again, so double click on the, the step block, we we'll show the block parameters. So the step chain to see when there'll be a change from one signal, one value to another. So here, let's choose the step time is zero because at the beginning we apply the ending force, which is one solvent Newton. So initial value is zero. So the final value, so final value is U. Let's again let's put the letter U. So since the U is not assigned yet, again it will give you some warning, but no worries. Once we run the code, the warning will will be will disappear. The apply and OK. Then the next step, we need the output. So there are two ways, or multiple ways. So we can visualize the output. So we can do, if you want to see, visualize the output within the simulink, you can use something called scope. Just type scope. Then let's align the two blocks. You can see the suggest connection. Let's connect this block. So you can visualize the output when we run the simulic model. Then another way so we can do is to insert a block called two workspace. to workspace. Then all related data will be sent to the workspace here. Then they can be manipulated later on. So to connect the two workspace to the connection, just click on any link. Then this signal, the data will be 
sent to the workspace. If we double click on the alt theme alt, so we can change the variable name. For for example, here let's change it to speed. Then the unit of the speed is meter per second. If we want to change it to mile per hour, so we can add a gain block. So the value is 2.237. So between, so we can drag the block to rearrange their locations, to rearrange their connections, to insert a gain. So gain is just a number. So the number should be, if you want to change it from meter per second to mile per hour, so the number will be 2.237, just apply. So the number should be between the output and the output speed. So we can delete all the connections, then reconnect them. See, all possible connections will, will show up. So here, click one part, then the, click on the line, okay? Now we have a simulated model. Okay, so this model will be exactly the same with the model I built earlier. So you can drag this block to show the trans function. So let's make it larger to see the trans function and drag the block to rearrange it. Okay. So let me use the model I built earlier. So the name of the model is called cruise control. We can, so once I have a model, just click on the save. I gave the model a name. So here I name it cruise control. Then in the Simulink, you can directly call the model using the command theme. Okay, theme, then the name of the model. Here it shows the simulation time. Then the output, so the output, we call it alt. You can give any name you want. It contains all the output. So we specify it to be sent to the workspace. Then you can have a command, for example, like an open the Simulink model, but this is not necessary. So once we run the Simulink model, then we have the data. So the data will be in this format. So this is alt the name we, we gave to the output of simulation model, then the speed, so the variable we gave. So in general, so there are so one variables that contain both the time and data. So therefore we use alt dot speed dot time, the alt speed. So the speed is a name we gave in to the variable in the simulation, just the speed. So then this will be the alt speed time and alt speed data. We can change the line, the line width to the either grade, the add X label and Y label. Now again, so let me run, run this live script file, go to live editor. Let's click on, let's do this step by step. So first, define the variable m. Define the variable b. Define the variable u. Define the final time. So here we are simulating the control system using the Thimilink model. Now the simulation is done. You can see we have the output to the class, the type of this data, it is simulation output. Then let's open here to open the simulation model. It's not necessary. Okay, it opens 
the semantic model. Then we can plot the data. Then let's add the X label. It's time, the unit is second. Then Y label, it shows the velocity. So the unit is a mile per hour. Now I can let you know why I prefer the semantic model. So here we, ha we have only one block. So this block represents the model, the process. Then later on, you can find the model of a sensor, model of a controller, model of a actuator. So you can add all the blocks here and just connect them. Then you can have a complete control system. 